casting. His faithfulness endures from age to age. On page 76 is Psalm 114. Hallelujah! When Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange speech, Judah became God's sanctuary, and Israel his dominion. The sea beheld it and fled. Jordan turned and went back. The mountains skipped like rams, and the little hills like young sheep. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you turned back. You mountains, that you skipped like rams, you little hills like young sheep. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the hard rock into a pool of water, and flint stone into flowing spring. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. It is now, and will be forever. Romans chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. Accept the one whose faith is weak, without quarreling over disputable matters. One person's faith allows them to eat anything, but another whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not. And the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does for God has accepted them. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To their own masters, to their own master, servants stand or fall. And they will stand, for the Lord is able to make them stand. One person considers one day more sacred than another. Another considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. Whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. Whoever eats meat does so to the Lord, for they give thanks to God. And whoever abstains does so to the Lord, and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives for ourselves alone, and none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. You then, why do you judge your brother or sister? Or why do you treat them with contempt? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will acknowledge God, so that all of us will give us praise and open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Amen. Come then, Lord, and help your people. Bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Matthew on page 4 of the order of service. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wants to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered... Oh, as he began the settlement... Oh, hold on a second. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this time, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be 
patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailer to be tortured until he could pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of us unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The word of the Lord. Um, in today's readings, I don't know if you notice that the Psalms includes in the first line, the house of Jacob from a people of strange speech. And then, of course, we just read the gospel. And when the gospel, the Lord talks about how many times can you forgive someone? How much, you know, it's 77 times forgiving your brother and sister. And he says, this is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or your sister from your heart. And in the story of Romans is really almost a story of opposites. Someone who eats meat, someone who doesn't eat meat. Someone who sets aside one day special for the Lord, someone who doesn't. They do all these things and he said it doesn't matter. Don't judge them. It is not yours to judge them or condemn them or to make a difference in them. This, because we know it's up to the Lord. The Lord knows what's in their hearts. And we, at some point, will be called to judgment ourselves in front of the Lord. And each of us will give an account of ourselves. We won't give an account of our brother or sister that we forgave 77 times. We won't be giving a, an account of our neighbor, our spouse, or our co-worker, we'll be giving an account of ourselves. And I'm thinking, when you talk about that, what will you be able to say? Will you say that you forgave your brother 77 times? And you did it from your heart. And who was our brother? Our brother is everyone. Did you forgive everyone for what they did that might have felt like a trespass to you? Did you judge others because they were different, or treat them with contempt because they weren't like you, like what you expected? Did you step back from someone because they had strange speech, or what seemed strange to you? This is a really hard way to live your life. You can live life from thinking, I'm a good person, I'm nice to people, but did you really step in? Did you actively understand who and what you, your, your impact is on others. I've heard a phrase this week that we should be more than the golden rule. Golden rule is, you know, do unto others as you would have them do to you. There's a platinum rule. The platinum rule is you do unto others as they would like to have you do unto them. And you don't know what that is unless you ask, unless you open your mind to that. At work, we've been um, moved beyond, no, I wouldn't say beyond, but we've added to diversity and inclusion training. Now we do training on unconscious bias. And um, it's been really eye-opening for me. I was really lucky, because I kind of had like, I just want to think this out and talk about this. And I looked at the readings and I thought, these readings are going to be like the last time when I had to talk about repent and no, no part of this worked out. So, um, so, but this time I looked at the readings and I said, yes, it's talking about people with strange speech. It's talking about us judging other people based on what our set of view and lens of the world is. It's natural that we categorize. From the very beginning, we learn to say, mommy, daddy, we know who's who, right? We categorize. That's a part of our lives. That is the lens in which we see life. We see life from our view. And unconsciously, we're always categorizing. 
You can't not categorize. Our eyes see. And if we don't see, we at least hear. It's interesting, very famous study. In the US at one point, almost everyone in an orchestra, all the players, were male. Some women stuck in there, but mostly male. And so they started doing auditions, blind auditions. Judges didn't see who was playing. The person didn't talk. The person was already sitting there. They had no way of knowing whether or not the person was male or female. 5% increase in the number of women. And the only difference was they didn't see them and say, and you would ask them, they said, no, we don't have an unconscious bias towards men. But you do because in your head, way back there, men are in orchestra. Only a rare woman is so talented she should be in there. We even today realize we can't just categorize men and women. Where are they? I look at it and I say, okay, so the first time, I mean, I've read a lot about it. One of my daughters is constantly sending and posting things, and so I, I get it. I've read a lot about it. But I'm at a um, college reunion, and my good friend is next to me, and she says to the young woman who's working with us, she says, she said, I go by she, her. What do you go by? And the person said they. I was like, well, this is the strangest conversation I've ever had. <laughs> and, and I thought, wow, why should it be strange to you? Why should it be strange to you? I've actually known this for a long time that there are people who are different like that, that their gender isn't necessarily defined by what I call it and you call gender. And yet, confronted with this, I'm thinking, I shouldn't think this is strange. I should be taking this part of my lens of what I see and recognize for her, they, looking at me, they sees me and the world differently. Because that category is not part of their lives. So it is about how someone else sees the world. So it's, not, it's beyond recognizing, like I am today, uh, reading a lot of books about um, racist backgrounds and what has happened in the world, and, and more about the privilege I have, which I, I recognize that, but I didn't realize how deep it is. The FHA, this is what the book I'm reading right now, the FHA, for virtually all of its four, first 40 years of existence, purposely would not allow loans to black people. Purposely set out to have neighborhoods that were white neighborhoods. And that means that I grew up in a nice white suburb. Nice, nice, we don't say nice. Understanding that the person who went to school with me who was black, she didn't have access to that same neighborhood. Was that my fault? Well, and not my fault, but I need to understand what that means today and understand that lens that she comes to me. Her experience in high school was different than my high school experience because she lived a different life even though we lived in the same town. My sister, who literally is uh, like 15 months younger than I, we literally shared a bed for many years. We had the same experience growing up, but our lives have diverged got married much younger than I did and had kids much younger. She has a whole slew of grandchildren and I adore my one grandson. I have to tell you, I was so jealous of her for years. Um, but I, her, our lives have, we started the same place, but she sees life in a different way. She lived life as a teacher. She has, I live life as a project manager. We married different people. We live different lives. And each of us sees similar the world similarly, but not the same. And none of us sees the world the same as, the point of that is none of us sees the world the same as others. And I cannot hold you in contempt. I cannot judge you because you see the world different from the way I see it. That's not my job. My job is to make sure I am conscious of what you need. Not what I need, but what you need. 
and what is your story if you choose to tell me that your story but to not look at you and make categories and put you in a particular slot to be aware of the fact that I am always putting you in a particular slot and it has the potential for changing how I act towards you. That to me is what God will be looking to me and saying how he's going to judge me when the day comes. And will I stand up there and will I be able to say, yes, I was open. Yes, I not only followed the golden rule, I followed the platinum rule. Amen. page 92 at page 4 of the handout canticle 16 blessed be the lord the god of israel he has come to his people and set them free he has raised up for us a mighty savior born of the house of his servant david through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies from the hands of all who hate us he promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our lives. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, and will be forever. Amen. The Apostles' Creed, page 96, the prayer book. I believe in God, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the local Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrage B, on page 98 in the Fred Prayer Book. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. And hold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever and ever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. So we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Solace of the day. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A collect for Sundays. O oh God, Make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord, 
give us this day such blessings through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ our Lord. A call it for guidance. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. we call us for grace. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer for mission. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we will sing hymn number 674, <coughs> Forgive Our Sins As We Forgive, verses 1, 2, and 4. This day, we pray for Ian and Laura, our bishops, for Nigerian bishops, John and Marcus, and for Ian, our rector. We pray for the sick and suffering, and those in need of comfort, especially the people dealing with the devastating aftermath of Hurricane Laura, the Paul in Haudegard families, Cora Harrington and the Harrington families, the Bossy and Foster families, Barbara, Andrea, Shari, Sherry, Mary Waite, Marty, Lucy Pryor, Matthew Wood, and those committed to our ongoing prayers. We pray for those afflicted with the coronavirus, including Becca, their families and communities, for frontline workers and essential employees, for health care workers and professionals, especially Sheila, Kara, Robin, Paul, Mark, Adrian, Cindy, Kim, Sharice, Gina, Jen, Lorraine, Kyle, Brian, Terry, Michael, Megan, Amanda, Saud, Brian, Melanie, Laura, Ken, Sharon, Dave, Austin, Tim, Franny, Ryan, and Tammy, and for their families, for nursing home staff and residents, for all people and communities impacted by efforts to slow the spread of the disease. We extend prayers to students, teachers, and staff preparing to return to school as the coronavirus continues to spread. 
For these and all in need of God's comfort and peace, let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the repose of the soul of all those whose lives have been lost as a result of the coronavirus. We pray for the concerns and organizations supported by St. Peter's through missions, especially Africa Education Partnership. We give thanks for members of our armed forces serving at home and abroad for their families, especially Kenneth Fraley Jr., who was deployed, Kevin Merrill, Jason Dorval, Ryan Waite, and Jason Serra. <clears throat> and we pray for victims of natural disaster and human violence throughout the world especially those impacted by the wildfires in California <coughs> or the people of Beirut and Lebanon recovering from a devastating explosion that left its citizens dead, wounded, and displaced. Excuse me. Recovering from a devastating explosion that left its citizens dead, <clears throat> wounded and displaced for persons and communities impacted by centuries of anti-blackness and for those <clears throat> seeking to undo the harm of racism. Let us pray to the Lord. Are there others? <clears throat> In our parish cycle of prayer, we give thanks for the ministry of the ushers, our parish members, the Ostrowski family, the Pyle family, and Lynn Plank. We pray for groups, for the groups to whom we extend hospitality through the use of our buildings, especially Boy Scout Troop 62. And we offer thanks for all our blessings. And I thank you, Bob, for helping us. Please add your own intercessions during the following moment of silence. Bless Tony. General Thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world, our Lord Jesus Christ. The means of grace are the hope of glory, and we pray to give us such an awareness of your mercy that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Page 102, prayer for St. Saint, Saint Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one of glory to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desire and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of our, your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Amen. Him is, time him is number 376. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, verses 1 and 2.
here for the concluding words. I want to invite all of you who are watching to take the opportunity to come to church, to come and join us in the parking lot with your chairs. It's a great experience. We get to see each other. So I would encourage you to come and do it. It's actually really nice to be out here, even on a cool morning. It's lovely. So please come and be with us. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit.